Hey everyone, my name is Lido Deepmar, the founder of thebookofpractice.com, and today I'm going to present you a case study with my client Court, who is a martial arts instructor, and I really hope I pronounce it right. He's a seven degree black belt in Kaju Kembo. I think a martial art that blends five different styles. He's also a self-proclaimed beginner and purple belt in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. So he has joined our program, The Practice Blueprint, to help his progress in that venture where he is going to share his experiences of going through our program. Just so you know, in the beginning we had like a little bit of connection problem, but I think we solved it fairly quickly. So enjoy. Okay, it seems to work. Hey, hello? Hey, Kurt. Hello? Hello? Yes. Hi. Hey, how's, hey, it, going? how's it going? First of all, thanks so much for, for doing this case study, Court. I really appreciate it. I would like to hear a little bit about you and what do you practice and what's your past history? So I'm a martial arts instructor and uh, uh, primarily striking and weapons. But uh, I've also begun to learn Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, which is my new love. I'm what I would say is a, an intermediate rank now. Uh, the ranking system goes white and then blue and then purple. And there are divisions, stripes, uh, four stripes for each belt. So I'm now a second stripe purple. Mm. Um, it's a very different art. There's a lot of uh, carryover as far as the martial mindset from striking to grappling. But the techniques are all different. Yeah. Uh, the book, it's, it's like, uh, if, if you became a college educated person, right. But then you needed to learn all the same things in a different language. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So, yeah. So I'm applying Lido, I'm applying your, uh, principles now to accelerating my learning of the skill of Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Yeah. So that was the, the main reason you joined the program what i would like to ask you what was different about this program compared to maybe any other program you might have already tried or coaching maybe i would say more than anything it was the encouragement that uh failure is okay that in fact you should pursue failure yeah you should actually Try to do more in your skill than you are prepared to do. Yes. And to just push the edge. Not, for example, do something that's uh, crazy, dangerous, completely out of your league, but slightly more than you are comfortable with. Yes. And spend more time in that. Uh, <laughs> maybe I'll uh, move my uh, computer to, to another spot. Now you're back. <laughs> I think it's better. Yes. Yes, I think so too. Um, yeah. So so there's the um, a principle that uh, you have uh, elaborated on the, the way that I would like to say it is uh, turning the, uh, the pyramid upside down. You know, a, a lot of times folks uh, spend a lot of their time practicing something that they're very comfortable with. And at the very end of their session, they challenge themselves. Exactly. And I'm I'm inverting that. I'm I'm making it uh, uh, so that I, uh, for example, when I uh, train with uh, 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 training partners, I might look at somebody that's my same level or less than my same level, right? Yeah. And work with them first, and then go with the uh, brown and black belts. I'm I'm inverting that now. I'm no. I'm uh, actively trying to get. Um, folks that are uh, much better than me and get my ass handed to me. <laughs> yes, but it does it does make an effect. Oh my uh, my professor I uh, complained to my professor one time, "Hey, I I keep finding myself in this position, one of the many uh, positions that uh, that you can be trapped in." Yeah. And I I I said I I keep getting in this position, you know, how do I prevent that? And he said, "Get into that position more." <laughs> uh, yeah, deliberately create scenarios yeah deliberately create scenarios where you have to fight your way out of that spot and uh i thought oh lido 
you know, <laughs> remind me of exactly the same uh, principle. Yeah, you know, if you're having trouble with something, maybe that's a sign that you should do more of it. Do of more that, of it. Even if it's uncomfortable. Yeah. Yeah. Leaning in. I think a lot of people know generally this advice. It's just that it doesn't get breaked down into really logical reasons why that works. And once you understand those reasons, it really enables you to just trust the process and do more of it. Anyway, it connects great to the next question. Basically, as a result of implementing the course, what would you say was the result and the outcome for you? Well, um, I've always been... As a martial artist, I'm I'm small. I'm uh, five foot six inches, mm. and uh, I, I've always had uh, above average strength for my size, mm -hmm. uh, probably because of the training, right? Yeah. Uh, and I used to be the little guy that was surprising, and that was you know forty years ago. Yeah. Now I'm the old guy that's surprising. That's surprising. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 55 years old and, and uh you found uh, a way now, to transition. <laughs> yes, yes. Nice. <laughs> um so I, I am facing people that um are in my category, right? Uh, purple belts and uh, and brown belts and black belts and and uh, uh finding that I'm presenting a real challenge. I'm beating folks that are outside of my weight category, as in heavier, yes. 50 pounds uh, heavier. Nice. I worked with a purple belt uh, the other day that's 120 pounds heavier than me. Uh, I didn't wow. win, <laughs> but I made it very, very, hard. very difficult for him. Right. And, and, uh, and the thing is, uh, now I'm seeking those guys. I'm not coddling my ego and progressing slower, I'm consistently challenging myself, and the results just accelerate. You know, you have to adapt and adapt quickly. Great, great. And I'm finding that uh, uh, my uh, promotions are are more frequent, and my uh, my uh, uh, success rate in, in getting certain holds and certain escapes uh, is increasing. Great. Would you say if you would have gotten this program like early on, and I, I mean like many, many years ago, would you have experienced a, a difference in results? I would like to say I wish I had it earlier. Yeah. But I think that the time in your life that you uh, come across this information is the time that you're ready to implement it. Yeah. Everything has a everything happens at the right time. Right. Exactly. Right. Uh, if I was not ready. Yeah, if I was not ready, I, I would have ignored your advice. I I, I would have not. Uh, Very true. Uh, taken it. Very true. I I had the same experience in life. Now, yes. was there anything specific about the program that specifically helped you change? Like, what was the main thing that you think was the most effective for you? I think the shift for me occurred internally. I mean, I'm absorbing all the things that you're saying, right? But I think that the shift uh, internally was to stop comparing my performance, right? Yeah. Uh, because there's always somebody that's doing better than you yes, uh, always. in one category or another. I'm taking more risks. I'm taking more risks uh, and uh, uh, being willing to accept temporary failure. Nice. And uh, that was probably the biggest takeaway and I'm still going back, and there's more to get from your course than just that lesson, right? I'm, I'm, I'm reviewing it. I'm coming back to it. Great. But that was probably the best thing right now in my life. Great. Actually, there's a lot of updates coming to the course soon. I'm currently working oh, really? uh, on a lot of material, and I, I'm so excited to share it. But, of course, it takes time. It takes some time. But uh, there's going to be at least as much material as there already was so there's actually one last question i have and it's if there's anyone watching who is on the fence about joining the program what would you tell them since you know there's so many different skills i'm not a martial artist you are a martial artist and people um uh, have, I think, a hard yeah, time believing nice. that uh, they can get value from somebody who is not even in their own skill. So what would you tell? Oh, 
Oh, there are there are principles uh, for acquiring any skill, and that is what you have cracked the code on. There is carryover. It's the skill of getting skill, right? There's it's the skill of becoming skillful that you're teaching, and uh, I, I think that that's huge. Uh, and uh, you can recognize that somebody is world class even if you don't know what you're looking at. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like you don't, don't have to be a gymnast to appreciate exactly. that is a good gymnast, yeah. you know? And uh, yeah, and 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 there's there's something that's difficult to describe, but uh, definitely real that I perceive in your team Thank that you. has given me real applying. Yeah, you, you can definitely apply what kind of mindset is necessary to become the best in your field. You can apply that to any field. Great, great. Basically, that were all my questions. My question to you is if you have any questions, although you can you can ask uh, ask me anytime if you have some, some trouble. I have a question. Yes. I, I do have a question for you. It's a personal question. Please. Are, are you learning? Uh, copywriting and and marketing uh as as one of your skills that you're trying to improve that's exactly what i do i was always really into marketing and i tell you why i think marketing is a very hidden underappreciated part of understanding psychology so first of all i was always yes. interested in psychology and understanding how people work sure. and i was like wow this is really interesting i think in the last 15 years I've been learning online marketing as a hobby, just as a hobby. I didn't really think that I would do anything with it. And then life just tossed me into a different direction. Basically, that's about it. But I, I do love marketing because of the psychology that I learned from it. And I learned a lot from marketing. I've been watching your uh, your ads and your uh, uh, your copy, basically. And yes. uh, uh, I've seen improvements. I, I am a copywriter. Great. Uh, so, yeah. So uh, Great. I don't uh, think I'm good, actually, but I try my well, best. The thing is, uh, people can perceive genuine effort, whether it's polished or not, right? They, right. they can perceive it. Yeah. Right. There are grammar errors and there are yes. uh, uh, difficult sentences, but I get it. And I'm super impressed, uh, even though there are some mistakes and so yeah. forth, that your enthusiasm shows through. And that's more important than the uh, the actual words or the actual uh, process. Yeah, and, thank uh, you. And I just want to encourage you to continue to uh, increase your skill, right? Yeah, and <laughs> my grammar. Sure and my grammar, probably. <laughs> <laughs> I'm continually cleaning up. If you would have seen the first version of the book, it was a mess. All the time, I keep updating it. I keep seeing mistakes, which, you know, I, I read them through a thousand times and I didn't see, and then I see it. How could I not see this before? <laughs> I don't know, but uh, I will I will keep working on that. But mm. it's true that even though there are grammatical errors, I still hope that they understand the message, understand yes. the mission behind it. And that probably, maybe not everyone, but everyone who has done this kind of work understands how much effort still went into it. Right, right. And they perceived that. I did. I perceive that. Uh, I I, I uh, completely excuse any grammatical problems and, and so forth uh, uh, because it's like, okay, this, this man is trying to help me and, and I can tell it's it's sincere and yeah, so, kind, yeah. kind of anyway kind say the course is i was going to just say uh i i i'd volunteer myself but uh i'm so darn busy <laughs> i i would volunteer myself uh as your uh editor or a copywriter but yeah. i appreciate <laughs> i appreciate it course yeah it's kind of the mentality of take the meat and spit out the bones like even even if there's not everything everything correct if if people can find value that's that's all that matters so basically yes i think that's the interview 
Is it okay for you if I use this uh, video recording as a case study? Absolutely, absolutely. Thank I'd, you. I'd recommend that you edit it because <laughs> I will. I will <laughs> because I will, of uh, you know some of our. So basically, that's it. Thank you very much, Court. I really, really appreciate it. It was it was very nice. And uh, you too. Yes. Thank you, man. Thank you, man. And talk to you soon. I guess. Very so, good. All right. Bye bye. Have a, have a great practice, man. Bye bye. I know.